before the man he cast the ground he cast the ground for the sake of man that is why the blood of jesus had to hit the ground so the ground is no longer cast now and when jesus came he did not he did not just appear there was a preparatory period so we, we've seen there was uh, the, the Abrahamic covenant, there was the Mosaic law, then there was the advent of prophets and judges and the kingdoms, and all these were showing the character of God concerning men. Can you imagine? The Israelites would blame God, they would call him names, and then at some point God would remember them and bring them back to himself, showing the love of God. But a time came that God brought the true Israelites for his Lord. Their calendar has been suspended for us. We have only three races in this world. What are they? The church, the Jews, and the Gentiles. The, the Jews, by God's manifold wisdom, he set them apart. But they still are as desperate for a, for a savior just as any other group of of people all right but they don't know that they are still waiting for a savior they'll be shocked praise the lord so when we talk of christmas day what are we talking about we're talking of the fulfillment of god's prophecy and in the presence of two witnesses shall a matter be settled another prophet came to affirm the words of the almighty god and that was isaiah We'll come to Isaiah in a while. Just, just let's go to Second Samuel, chapter seven, verse twelve to fourteen. He says, "I start from verse twelve. Says, when your days are fulfilled and you are rest with you uh, and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you." Still talking about Jesus, who will come from your body? You see that? I will establish his kingdom. Second Samuel seven. Some of you don't know where Second Samuel is. See. This, this story here, David wanted to build God a house, and God told him, I don't live in houses. I asked him, has, all this while, has anybody ever tried to build me a house? I, he said, I live in tents and tabernacles, and you are the tent and the tabernacle. God has come to tabernacle himself in you. Praise the Lord. He said, no one has ever been my shepherd. See, the story came in, and, and, and because of that desire, God told David, he had already given serious offering and sacrifice before look at chapter 6 there is a lot of giving there and because of that giving he told him that i will set up your seed after you who will who will come from your body and i will establish his kingdom he shall build a house for my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom forever i'll be his father and he shall be my son verse 16 and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you and your throne shall be established what forever this was talking of jesus came through the the lineage of david is he that's why the jews were calling him the son of david you remember the blind the blind man he says son of david have mercy on me he he was calling him according to the revelation that he had he says, son of David. Others call him Jesus of Nazareth. Son of David. Have mercy on He was going by this revelation here. Because David was, was told that out of your body, out of your body, that's a lineage. And if you see the people that, that are in that lineage, you'll be shocked. They are not of good character. But Jesus came through that have you ever read it in matthew you see so many characters there he said i shall build my house for my name and i'll establish the throne of his kingdom forever this kingdom is forever it's it's not for a time so the seed came the seed who is jesus christ came and now we go to after that let's go to isaiah 9 look at this verse 6 says for unto us a child is born. Are you there? For unto us a child is what? The baby Jesus is born. For unto us a child is born. And a 
And to us a son is what? And to us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. Now, you need to understand this. Praise the Lord. The guys that celebrate Christmas carrying the baby Jesus. They are still living in the realm of a child. The child Jesus. The baby Jesus. But we have moved to the realm of the son. Praise the Lord. And to us a child is what? Is born. And unto us a son is given. The son has become the Lord Jesus Christ. Initially, the angel said his name shall be what? It shall be Emmanuel, God with us. It shall be, you call his name Jesus. But a time came when that name was now conferred on him. And the father said, this today have I begotten thee. Today. He said, well, let's go to Hebrews. You see what I mean. <laughs> you see what I mean. A child is born, then a son is given. A child is born, then unto us a son is given. And he says, and the government. And the government. The God authority. Dominion. And the government will be upon his shoulder. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> he said, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. But before we go to those two, government and the Wonderful Counselor, I'd like us to see one more thing here. Hebrews number one. Hebrews one. You see, it's important to know what Christmas is about. This is Christmas special. He says, Hebrews chapter 1 says, In various times and in various ways, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his what? Who he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he has made the worlds. Now, verse 5. So God has spoken to us already. You don't need a prophet to come and uh, try to tell you about tomorrow. God, your tomorrow is already unveiled in Christ Jesus. Say amen. amen. So how is your tomorrow? It's beautiful. How beautiful is it? It is glorious. How glorious is it? As glorious as Jesus Christ. I can face tomorrow because Jesus, because of Jesus. He says here, verse 5, Hebrews 5, 1 says, For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son. Today have I begotten you. And then he says, and again, I will be to him a father. And, he, and again, do you see that? And again, I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a what? A son. Praise the Lord Jesus. You are my son today. He said, you are my son Today have I begotten you. You know when he said this? He said this when Jesus was raised from the dead. When he rose from the dead. He said today have I begotten you. I'll be to him a father. He and he shall be to me what? A son. Praise the Lord Jesus. Verse 4 says, Having become so much better than the angels, he has inherited and obtained he has an inheritance. He has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. And that name, he acquired that name. He inherited that name. That day he descended to hell and fought Satan and came with victory. He fought. You see, God could not come and save man as God. Christmas is about God becoming man so that he can defeat Satan as a man. Satan was defeated by a man, the man Jesus Christ. Satan was not defeated by God. God is too much to fight with a devil. He had to put on, he had to empty himself of divinity. The Bible says, he who was equal to God counted it not what? No, Robert, to be equal what? To God. But he did what? He emptied himself of, of what? Of deity. Oh 
my God. Jesus got born again for the church. Because he, he was made sin. You ask yourself, at what point did he share of sin? At the point when the father said, Today, you are my son. I have begotten you. And again, I'll be to him a father. And he'll be to me a son. When he was at the cross, he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. He said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? Why have you forsaken me? At that point, he had been separated from God, the Father. He had become sin. And when he became sin, he had to share of sin 